Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be creating a simulation that is of a plastic bag floating in the wind, right? I think that's going to be fun. It adds a lot of vibes to your scenes as well, cityscapes, whatever. Um, so let's just play around with that. So we first need to model a bag, right? Now, what does a bag look like? Well, that's up to you. Um, but something has to be able to get inside the bag, right? You, that's usually what a bag is for. Um, so let's use or let's create something like that. So shift A mesh. Let's start with a plane RX 90 and this is our starting shape. Okay. Now, usually you have a plastic bag. We can just extrude this face to the right like that. We can select the bottom face with three face select mode and just scale this down in the Y direction. There we go. And instantly we can just open up the top by hitting delete and faces only faces. Let's do that. And we need some handles, of course. So let's press Ctrl R and scroll up once. The left click and escape and SX scale that a bit to the left like that. Then select the edges on the sides here with two edge select, by the way. And then you can select them by holding shift. Press E, Z, and there we go. Something like that. And then we can bridge these two edges by selecting them right mouse and bridge edge loops. Same for this, bridge edge loops. There we go. Now let's add a subdivision modifier as well. Subdivision surface and set that to like two or three. 20, oh my God, I'm, I'm crashing. I set it to 23. All right, we're back and we set the modifier to three subdivisions. That is looking fine. Um, now if you want a corner to be sharper, for example, this corner here, we can go into edit mode, alt set, and press one to go into edge or sorry a vertex select for example then we can select these vertices and these and shift e that and then it's going to appear sharper right like a plastic bag would perhaps and i'm going to add a few edge loops here as well because otherwise we're going to have a very uneven kind of spread in our subdivision surface right if i will apply this now and we can see that uh, these vertexes, these faces are stretched in that direction. And I want them to stay more squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and add some edge loops here, like two. And if we apply it in that case, we get more squared faces, which is what I um, like more when we're going to do simulations, right? So we will apply this later. And for now, we can actually press S and X to scale this a bit more up in that bulk direction, I suppose. And this one as well, S, X. Make it a bit more bulky for fun. Um, and that looks fine. And then I'm going to select this edge and this edge. And press S, Y. And just scale this inwards a little bit. And let's scale these two inwards a little bit as well. S, Y. Make everything a bit more thin. A bit more plastic bag-like, I suppose. I'm going to select these two. And these two and press SX and scale these two out a bit more like that. And I'm going to select the top face here and this and press SX and scale this inwards a little bit more. Something like this already looks better. Maybe press GZ and move them up a little bit. And something like this is something we can use already for our plastic bag, right? So that is looking quite beautiful. Now, we don't need to apply the subdivision level unless we want to. Um, but in general, a cloth simulation is a modifier as well, which means that it's going to look at the order of your modifiers that are before the cloth simulation and will, they will be taken into account as well. So how do we set this up, right? So let's start with picking a general kind of direction that we want our plastic bag to float in. Let's say we want to have it float like this. Beautiful. Then I will already set it a bit more like this because for that to happen, we have to have wind entering from here and blowing it to the right. Okay. So this has to be pretty much the, the shape or the, the flow path of that bag. Now to add a cloth simulation to this, let's actually shade this smooth. There we go. Right mouse shade smooth. And we can now just go to the physics tab, the simulations. And we can add a cloth simulation. Cloth. Now, if we play this, it's gonna drop down because nothing is happening. So, before we're gonna change any of these settings, I'm first going to hit Shift A, force field, and add a wind force because something has to be blowing our bag 
around in the scene. And it doesn't matter where you place the wind, it just matters what the direction of that wind is. For example, a bit more up and to the right. Now, if we play this, nothing is really going to happen, and that is because of two reasons. The wind is not strong at all, and the bag is too heavy and not flexible enough, so to speak. So let's change some of these variables. If we click on the bag, there is a one physical properties tab vertex mass, which is usually quite high for objects like this. So let's just set this a bit lower, 0.01, and see how that changes. So our bag is actually starting to get some ripples. And if that's too much for you, just yes, set this to 0.1, and you can try to get the right value there. Now, to make it look like it's falling more slowly and that it's catching more wind, that's what plastic bags do. There's a few things we could try. Now, the first thing is the air viscosity, which is the thickness of the air. The thicker the air, the more viscosity it has. And which means that basically the, the air particles below that will be well, thicker and they will slow down that bag more. There's going to be more resistance there of that bag falling. So if we increase the viscosity to 3, we already get a slower motion of that plastic bag because it's catching more wind. Okay. Now, some other things I want to do is in the damping tab, I am just going to check out the values that we have here. And I am just going to set my damping of the bending to about 0.5, I guess, or maybe a bit lower. Let's go 0.3. And if we play this now, you can see that it's just slightly more relaxed, I guess, when we drop that um, compared to how we had it before. Now, uh, let's also take an account that our wind is not doing a lot yet, right? So we may need to just increase that strength by a lot. Let's set it to 50. And if we set it to 50, nothing is really happening yet. All right, so let's try and change that. Let's select our actual bag and let's set the vertex mass to even lower. And let's see if that helps anything. All right, so you can see it's already helping. Our wind is already catching it up from the bottom a little bit, it's making it float a bit more. But perhaps our strength needs to be even higher. Set this to 200 and let's see what that does to our object. All right, so that's already starting to pick it up a bit more. Um, and perhaps we need even more. Or the other way is to start playing around with the, um, the stiffness of the bag, right? The more we make this resist kind of bending and stuff, the more it will actually catch up with its speed. So if we set the compression strength to be higher, it should, in theory, also make our bag move more with the actual wind. Now, it is not visible that much. Um, so perhaps we just set this value to be 0.001. Perhaps I set the viscosity to 2. Let's see if that changes anything. So this is all a lot of tweaking and trying, um, trying stuff out. And you can see that it's also going... Um, inside of the mesh, right? The mesh is not colliding with itself. And that's actually also going to add a lot of um, a lot of that motion into the correct direction as well. So let's uh, enable self collisions and let's play it right now, right? So you can see that the wind is now blowing the bag to the right. It is now colliding, right? The handles of the bag are trying to go inside of the bag and the bag is floating around quite beautifully and in an interesting way. I would say, right? So that is quite beautiful. Now, what I'm going to do is perhaps I don't want this to go as crazy yet as, as it does right now. So what we can try is set the modifier to two divisions and then add a subdivision right after that is going to smoothen out our mesh. So set it to two in front F2 and two after. And if we play that now, we should get a more smooth kind of motion, right? So that's already looking quite interesting. So to make this more chaotic, we can actually either add more force fields or we can go into the wind settings and add a little bit of noise here. So let's add a noise amount of two and see what happens if we do that. So nothing really seems to happen. So let's just try and set different kind of values there for our wind. Um, and I feel like the wind noise amount is always quite big. So perhaps we can hit shift A and find a force field and add a little bit of a turbulence in here as well that we set to a strength that is quite high as well. So now we can actually get a little bit more chaotic kind of movements. And the higher we set this, the more chaotic it's going to be. And we can set this to 300, for example, or we could even switch this to be, let's say, a vortex 
which is going to dangle it around in that direction. <laughs> a bit too much, if you'd ask me. But you can see what I mean, right? If we set this to 50 and increase the noise amount here as well, we can actually see that this bag is now going more in a, like a vortex kind of motion, which is quite interesting as well. Perhaps we set this a bit lower though, and see how that goes. So we do want a bit of that motion, but not too much. And let's set the wind to be higher as well. So this is all just tweaking values, as you can tell by now, um, until you've got what you really want. Okay, so that is looking quite good. Now I'm going to set this noise amount to just be higher, because I'm not seeing it enough. And that's a bit better, perhaps. But I want the wind to also go off and on a bit. So to do that, we can actually insert a keyframe for the strength there. And we can swipe this window to the left and go to our animator tab, which is... Let's go to the graph editor. And now for the strength here, where is my strength? Um, let's hit home. And that will bring us to a strength. We can go to the modifiers and actually add a noise modifier to the strength of the wind as well. All right. Um, so let's zoom out a bit. So this is our modifier. There we go. And if we go to the tab, we can actually set the settings to be a bit more relaxed, right? So I don't want this wind to go crazy like that. So let's just increase the scale by a lot. There we go. And we can also increase the strength because it's too little now. I want this to range from like 600 perhaps all the way to 300. So we can just increase the strength there. Like that perhaps. And let's zoom in. A little bit as well on our origin point and we can tell how much many of these cycles we're getting in for example 200 frames okay and then we can just try to play this and see what happens so now it's less strong now it's getting stronger and then it's getting less strong and that's quite cool and actually what i'm gonna do is set this strength to be let's say higher even Right, I want more and less wind, like very regularly. So let's play that instead. So now it's going nowhere, it's going very hard, and then it's going to go back to almost zero at some point, right? And it's going to keep blowing. So let's rotate this a bit more to the side, actually, and let's play that right now. So you can see that our bag is getting speedy and less speedy in regular intervals of time, pretty much, right? And that's looking quite cool. Now, we could do the same for our vortex effect, but I think I'm just going to set that right there. So now that we've got our bag floating, perhaps we can also just actually do add a bit of subdivisions here. Right, so there's not a lot going on in terms of the shape in the bag in the middle, for example. So if we want a bit more there, we would probably need a bit more subdivision. So let's set this, the first one to three and the second one to one. And let's see what that does to our actual shape, right? So the bag will, it, it does just look a bit more interesting, all right? More is happening in that actual bag, I suppose. It looks, it looks more like more fun. All right, so let's go with that. And let's also afterwards add a small solidify modifier, solidify, and set that to a low value like 0.003. Just so we have a bit of thickness we can play around with in the materials. So now to add a material, let's open up a new window and set this to the shader editor. Hit new and this is our new material. Now we can play around with these settings to try and get the appearance of a plastic bag. So how do we do that? Well, we do need a bit of transmission. That is for sure. So let's go to the rendered view first. Um, actually, let's set our render engine to cycles and GPU. And let's set an environment texture as well. That is going to be not color, but environment texture set to an HDRI. So let's go to an HDRI. If you don't have that, go to polyhaven.com and find an HDRI that you like. And um, I'm just going to choose perhaps a studio kind of lighting if I have that somewhere. Let's just go with... Let's go with this one instead, Burnt Warehouse. Fine. And let's go to the Render tab and let's hit Film. And let's hit transparent as well, right? So if we go to the render view now, we're going to see the lights from that background, but not the actual background. So let's make this like a, 
black plastic black or transparent we can go with black first and see how we end up so let's increase the blackness a bit but not completely black of course there we go and let's also play with the roughness let's make this a bit less rough and a real kind of plastic bag material usually has some weird or crazy folds going on as well right um, and we're not going to use that or do that in the actual geometry and because that will require a lot of geometry but we can do that with a normal map right so we can actually use a normal map drag that out as a pump map and a pump map has the ability to actually input a float parameter into the height which means we can add a black and white map there and for the bump i'm actually just going to find a noise texture i usually end up with that and let's just connect that to the height right away and we can see it looks like that right so it, it does add a bit of bumpiness but nothing fancy or anything right and um, so what we can do is press ctrl t here and let's go to the first frame and we can now just try and scale this into a direction that will look more natural for example right so we can scale for example this more down so there's more horizontal kind of folding going on or we can make it look the other way where it's more vertical stretching and i think vertical looks a bit more realistic in this case and what i'm going to do is ctrl shift click the noise texture and i'm going to increase the roughness by a lot and then reduce the scale so there's more kind of different scalings going on in here right if that makes sense and then we can also increase the detail if we'd want that perhaps a bit and then lower the scaling as well and make sure that you have this set on generated or uv if you set this to object and you play this you can see that your um the texture is not staying at the same point on your surface uh, but generated and uv will do that just fine okay so generated in this case i think will be okay and let's see how that looks right now. So that already looks a bit better, I suppose. Now the strength is quite hefty. So let's just reduce that. There we go. And we can even add a bit of a scale. Like that. And let's go a bit further along as well in the simulation. Just play it. And you see how it looks throughout your animation. And... Let's actually play around with the roughness a bit more, like that. And then let's play around a bit more with the scalings and stuff. And perhaps I don't want this to be as stretched in one direction as I thought I would have. Something like that's fine. And let's lower the scale a tiny bit as well. There we go. And perhaps the strength or the distance doesn't matter that much. Could be a bit lower too. And we could even add Shift A, add a math node, and add a second noise texture, Control Shift D, to keep the connection, and add that as another color. And we could just scale that up, for example, a bit more like that. And then Shift A, math, and then just multiply this with a lower value. And that means we're just getting like a second level of detail in this bag right and it doesn't have to be strong but it can be there in my opinion something like maybe a bit smaller but still present something like that right so this is without and this is with we just add a secondary kind of level of that detail and i feel like we lose a lot of that bump in our objects and um, so let's just set this back to one and this as well and see if we can dial it in a bit more here so this one can be bit less strong but perhaps we can stretch this out a bit in say the x direction i think that looks cool i think that's the that's a cool look let's change the scale as well a little bit like that and change this one a bit as well just find the right values the values that work for you i suppose something like that is looking quite cool um and let's play around with the detail as well. Like that. Like that. All right, so now we get we really get a lot more detail, which is quite quite cool. Um perhaps something like that. All right, let's see without and with. 
there's quite a lot of difference going on. Um, and if we play this now, it actually looks way more like a plastic bag because we have more detail. Okay, so I think this looks fine. Um, there's some strong lighting going on, so perhaps we just give it a bit more, let's say, roughness for now. Um, it all depends on your lighting setup. Something like, something like this, perhaps. And if we play this now, we get a nice plastic bag in the wind, right? That's looking quite cool. Um, so if you want to bake this, go to your physics properties, your physics tab for the cloth, head down to cache. We can delete all bakes we have right now, and then we can bake everything. So we can set an end frame and a start frame. And I'm just going to bake from 1 to 250, and then you will bake this. And it's going to bake. And it's not going to take too, <coughs> too much time, but I'm just going to pause this and be back. So it is now baked, so let's just see how this looks. I'm going to frame one and I'm playing my simulation. And you can see um, that our bag is actually quite cool in falling through the sky and floating, right? Isn't that nice? So um, that is pretty much it. If you like this tutorial, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We will enjoy any one of these and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.